It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. What's going on, Lake of the Ozarks Wild? Will, Uncle Chris, here for another weekly cup of coffee from Slumberland at the lake. And this week, we're going to be right here, of course. We're going to have Jackie Crookson with the Lake Fiber Art. Yeah, you know, pretty cool stuff. It's cool. Not really up Uncle Chris and I's alley, but the wife's maybe. And also something different for the lake. So we'll talk about the Fiber Arts Festival, plus a whole lot of local headlines. But before we go to break and come back and get the show started. Uh, we just had Brinley's fourth birthday. Yeah. Over the weekend, she turned four. It went really, really cool, and I just gotta give a shout out to my incredible wife, because uh, she put together the ultimate birthday party. I had little responsibility, and I kept hearing from people like, how much money did you guys spend on this? Like, I know, like nothing, like my wife is just that good. And so, wow. Brinley had the weekend of a lifetime, and uh, hard to believe. Four years now she's been around, and that's all I've been thinking about is how quick these last four years have flown yep. by. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like yesterday she was just born now, four years later. Pretty soon she'll be a teenager. No doubt. I don't want to rush it, but on this week's Cup of Coffee, we're celebrating that and running you through a whole lot of local headlines. Plus, after this break from Slumberland at the Lake, I'll be joined by Jackie Crookson. Hey, everybody. It's Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We're in the middle of our fall home sale, and what's that mean for you? Great discounts for every room of your house. We've got up to 50% off of list pricing. And we're going to give you interest-free financing for up to 24 months if you choose. Don't forget, we deliver the entire lake area. Come check us out, Slumberland Furniture, where we're bringing happy home. All right, so now we've added uh, a couple of things to the set here, and I'm always interested in different organizations and unique events around Lake of the Ozarks. And so if you just started watching recently, you may not have met Jackie Crookson from the Lake Fiber Arts. Uh, she was here last year to tell us about this event when I first heard about it, but again, it's here, your guys' annual Fiber Arts Festival. And Jackie, uh, people out there are like, Fiber Arts, what? What is that? Now, I like, might give it away, but quickly, tell me, what is the Lake Fiber Arts? Lake Fiber Arts Group is a <clears throat> group of women who all share the enjoyment and liking of yarn and wool for applique, knitting, crocheting, sewing, upcycling, making paper, art with gourds. I mean, anything that's fiber wood qualifies, everything like that. And so we have now a group of, I think we have 96 members, or close, really close to 100. And Wait, uh, was it that big last year when you were here? Yes, we've been hovering around 100 for okay. over two years now. Wow. After COVID, you know, a lot of people came here to the lake, and they're all looking for something to be involved with. And, and our group has been um, really good about charity and moving around the community. We do a lot of stuff for CADV. Last year, they gave them over over 1,500 items, slippers and blankets and tote bags and all kinds of things. And then we do give them baking things, you know, at holiday time. And then wow. last year, the hats we have here, last year we gave out close to 700 hats. And they're for men, women, and kids. These are more girly hats right here. But no, this, we have, this yeah, one? that could I be a guy. That, yeah, Come you on. can wear that one. About? that one. Yeah. And so last year we gave those to all the schools from Eldon to Max Creek and Hurricane and Osage and, and uh, Camdenton and the Homeless Shelter and Hope House and Lamb House. And I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but we gave away a lot of hats. Wow, so and you guys are re really involved in not just getting together and having, having fun and doing events, but you guys are seriously identifying needs in the community yes, yes. with these organizations. So that makes sense why you guys are a nonprofit. Yes, we are, we are under the umbrella with Lake um, Art Council. And uh, we've got a couple of gals in our group that are real go-getters on this um, charity stuff, and we're doing all kinds of fabulous things. And um, I just lost my train of so thought we're, there. <laughs> we do have coming up, and, and a great thing is, I guarantee you, a lot of people watching are like, well, I didn't even know you guys were there. Like, I, I want to find out more. Maybe I want to 
get involved. And so come out to the Fiber Arts Festival yes. coming up. And so tell us when okay, that is and where that's at. Friday starting at noon, October 11th at Community Christian Church on North 5. You go past Casey's and take the next right. There'll be parking front and back of the church. And we go from noon until six. Lunch will be provided or for sale from Vinetti's uh, Italian Grocery Store. We love and, Vernetti's. Yeah, we love Vernetti's too. And then we will have a bake sale starting about 1, 1 and we'll have uh, sweets that people can purchase. And then we start up again on Saturday morning from 9 until 3. And the same thing, Vinetti's will do lunch. We'll have bakery in the afternoon. And then we have three raffle baskets, and here is one of them. They're probably worth about three, $350, and we raffle these off. The tickets are $5, and you get, what, five for $20, $20. And then if you buy $20 worth of tickets, you are in a drawing for five $100 shopping sprees that have to be spent at Fiberfest. And it's kind of a neat deal because we're putting money back into our vendors. And this sure. year we have 30 some vendors. We have the entire auditorium full and we'll have to eat lunch now on the other side because we have so many. And yeah, so we've been full up for quite a while and wow. uh, we have, uh, it's pretty exciting. Last year we had over 650 people through and uh, we have a lot of quilt things. We have things that are ready-made, great Christmas shopping, and then lots of supplies. There'll be yarn and needles and kits and wool and just about everything you can think of. And, and we have vendors from six states now. And so your vendors come from different states and are a lot of your vendors member of the uh, of the organization no, or just kind of finding out and think, hey, this is a great event we no, love. No, yeah, they to. like to come because they do very well there. They sell thousands of dollars worth of stuff. It's, so it's, this, this is, is not tiny. A big event and you will see all kinds of different stuff, not just the stuff you see oh, here no, no, that's going back into our local community, but it's also a great opportunity to come and talk to you, Jackie, the rest of your guys' board. I know Donna and the rest of them will be out there. And so, oh, yes, everybody will be there. That's one of the deals. If you're going to be in this group, you're going to have to work Fiber Fest. <laughs> and, and that's what you guys yeah. said when we got here was, yeah, we got Fiber Fest coming up. And so, if you want to find out more, not yep. only attend this awesome event, but go to lakefiberarts.com. And I understand you guys are great on Facebook, and then yep. as far as like reaching out directly to you guys, do you have an email you would push us towards? Well, you can, I think there's this Lake Fiber Arts at Gmail is fine, but you can go to the Facebook page and message us too. Perfect, and so that yeah, is- It's pretty easy to get to us. Jackie Crookson, and she is the Vice President with the Lake yeah. Fiber Arts. And I appreciate you coming on in your time, and uh, thank you so much. We'll be right back on Cup of Coffee after we look forward to this Friday night's Game of the Week. It's already week six of the high school football season. This Friday night, Versailles takes on the Clinton Cardinals. The Tigers lost a thriller at Clinton last year. Can they return the favor this time around? Let's find out. It all starts with a COMC pregame show at 6.30 Friday night. Kickoff set for seven, presented by Poly Live Boat Lifts. Join us for the fun Friday night, Clinton at Versailles on Lake TV. Yeah, so listen, I'm calling on those Versailles Tigers, my hometown Tigers, to yeah. dig deep and get that second dub of the season. Yeah. They had a tough one last week against Warsaw. That yeah, they, Warsaw team is good. Not as that, they started tough. Versailles was, man, defensively sound and holding them. But anyway, so that game, of course, will be our game of the week. Having a great time with high school football. Loving that. Make sure you connect with me on my pages because we put all those clips out right yeah big shout out to my guy robbie brewer and spencer wall they're crushing it on those repurposing of those great plays and clips uh but man i'm telling you both camington and osage get the w this weekend so lake area high school football is uh, moving in the right direction it was a good week right yeah absolutely and i get uh, i get to talk with the coaches every week you know yeah. so Shannon Jolly, pretty happy. They're four and one, and uh, come off a big win over California. No, he's not that happy. And he's go. He's a coach. He's never totally happy, right? Uh, so they're at Hallsville this week, and Camdenton has a really hard game at Rockbridge this week. Rockbridge, one of the best teams in the state. Didn't they just knock off Helias? They did. They just beat Helias last week. Yeah, and Camdenton's already lost pretty big against Helias. So yeah. the Lakers have their uh, work cut out for them, but at three and two. And uh, senior quarterback Carson Dern having a really good year statistically. He's put up some pretty big numbers. But loving high school football season. Eldon, they lost a close one uh, against 
uh, at home against Hallsville. Yeah. Um, they fall to three and two, still got that winning record. And of course, Versailles at one and four, as we told you. Home against Clinton. So on to local headlines. Uh, Christopher Waymeyer, you know, he had his class A felony for aggravated fleeing, a stop or detention resulting in death as well as second degree murder, both in connection with the death of Osage Beach police officer Felicia Carson. Uh, I looked on CaseNet and he's being represented by Brandon Scott Twible uh, from Springfield from the Twible Pearson criminal law firm. Also, Joseph Cole Roberts was listed as his co-defense. Um, but he appeared with his attorney last Monday for his bond hearing and the Court set the bond at $100,000 with several conditions, and that was met with a pretty big outcry on social media and from people publicly, from Prosecutor Grovesner uh, with Camden County, who's representing the state in Camden County, uh, that there should be higher uh, stipulations or harsher stipulations and conditions. So uh, that was put into place, and he bonded out with Dave B Vincent bail bonds um, right afterwards. So, and those are some pretty strict uh, stipulations. But what was your initial thought when you saw the bond set at a hundred thousand? I was surprised it was so low. Yeah. I mean, uh, I figured it would have been a lot higher. This is a, you know, very public thing. There was a lot of public outrage when uh, Officer Carson died that day, and everything, you know. And uh, so, I was kind of surprised it was so easy for him to get out. But, you know, some of the things are he's under house arrest and uh, not able to drive any motor vehicles, reports twice a week, uh, complies with, uh, you know, a curfew and everything. So sounds pretty much like he's under house arrest here. Sure. But uh, so he next scheduled to appear for hearings on October 25th. And I'm sure that'll be interesting. Yeah, that preliminary hearing at 9 a.m. in Camden County, Honorable Judge Aaron Martin proceeding. Uh, and that case is the state uh, in Camden County represented by Camden County Prosecutor Rochelle Grosner, and you saw she was adamant. She even said that he was a flight risk and a danger to the community, and she thought that it should be a much higher bond or no bond at all, but that's where it sits, and so we'll keep you updated. No, uh, I did hear, maybe we should do this for the rumor mill, but I heard there were camera crews with the police. You know, they're doing some behind the scenes uh, police department show, and so I heard there were camera crews with the police on the chase. I don't know that they were in Officer Carson's car, let's hope not, or we would have heard about that. But it'd be interesting if so, and if they caught the crash on camera. Yeah, I, I saw there was an article, I think Karamas put out. I didn't see uh, any further details or what they would. Of course, you know, if it was, you know, something like that, we would have heard about that surely by now. But anyway, that was the first of two bond situations. The first one with Christopher Waymeyer and the heartbreaking uh, death of Felicia Carson. The other one was a sad, a kind of an ironic, sad, weird situation mm -hmm. uh, with Camden's and bus driver Brett Emheiser, uh, who was arrested for allegedly driving drunk with numerous students from Camden County School District on his bus. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, yep. right? And uh, so the bond was set for him, $250,000, and there's 20 different felony counts of endangering the welfare of a child, class D felony, each punishable of up to seven years in prison if convicted. Yeah, so this is a guy that he was accused of very erratic driving, almost falling out of the bus when law enforcement arrived to, you know, get did him you out read of the, the bus. PC statement? I did not, huh? Yeah, I looked, I actually pulled up both the cases on the Waymeyer case and the Emheiser case on CaseNet and looked at all the court entries and docket entries and who their legal representation was and then that you can actually pull up the PC statement and the complaints and you can see exactly what the officer that arrested him said in his paperwork. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of wild the things that happened, the things that were said. We'll show you some of those right there from that PC statement. Now that was initially with 20, at least 20 students on board and you saw the comments, so naturally. Yeah. You got parents, you got concerned citizens. Yep. Um, and so his bond was set, and I wanted to find out who his legal defense was. Well, he didn't have means to afford a private attorney, so he had petitioned for a public defender, and that mm -hmm. had been denied, so they had appealed that, and that hearing, had just a recent hearing, had found that it 
was fair that the that he would have to be given a public defender, and that is uh, Michelle Lee Ann Parrish is going to be his public defender, and I could find little to nothing about her. She seems to be at the Lebanon area, uh, not a lot of cases with her involved, which is probably not a great thing for M. Heiser, but he said, I don't have the means to pay for my own legal defense, and so a public defender, and not only will he be uh, against the state of Missouri represented by Rochelle Grovesner, Camden County prosecutor, they called in two different special assistant prosecutors, Sherry Nicole Hamner and Stephen Mark Kretzer, both uh, Kretzer is with Camden County and Hamner is with Pulaski County. So hmm. they're really bringing in uh, plenty of prosecutors to make sure they throw the book at uh, M. Heiser here. You know, it was interesting to me that his bond was higher than the bond over here where somebody actually died. You know, in the, in the case of, uh, uh, you know, the Christopher Waymeyer fleeing causing the death of uh, the police officer. That was only 100,000, and this one, the drunk bus driver, yeah, was 250,000. Yeah, but apples and oranges. I mean, because you're gonna have people that are gonna argue with the Waymire situation. He never made contact with their car. He never actually did anything that caused. Now, his actions led to, whereas M. Heiser, in complete guardianship control and you know responsible for those children, those minors at the time, made the choice to get inebriated under substance and put the lives of not just the minimum of 20 students on his bus at risk, but the other people that were on the road. So, I mean, you're comparing apples to oranges. I think the bond was probably fair, and believe it or not, he already bonded out that very same day hmm. uh, for $250,000. Again, Dave Vincent Bail Bonds in Camdenton uh, bonded him out, and he has a review hearing on October 8th, which is for the petition to say whether or not he gets to keep his public defender or qualifies for a public defender, which if now if you're able to bond out $250,000, I think you're going to need about 10% of that, $25,000. I don't know exactly how that works. But on that review on the 8th, they might say, hey, you don't need a public defender if you're able to bond out. Of course, details there, I don't know. I did find out uh, it'll be Honorable Judge Heather Miller presiding in this case and also determine if uh, his eligibility for that public defender will stay. And if he doesn't, I don't know if that means he's going to have to find another attorney, but something tells me that he's in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think both those guys probably in some deep trouble. Yeah, and indeed. Two sad stories. Crazy to see as the lake continues to grow. Just some of the headlines uh, that are so close to home and that we continue to have, one more tragic than the other, of course. But, you know, the lake's going to continue to grow. We're going to see more of this. Now we're talking about casinos. We're talking about uh, our next story is new renderings of a casino unveiled, the investor group, Osage River Gaming and Convention. Uh, they had presented at the Lake Ozark Board of Aldermen meeting last Tuesday, and they had said all the reasons why the casino was going to be so great, and uh, of course, it's still subject to approval by Missouri voters, known as Amendment 5, but they offered these artist renderings mm -hmm. right there off of Highway 54. That's pretty. It, it, it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, that That is what it would look like right there off of 54. That's a, you know, it's been quarried for years. Um, and on the, you know, amendment to the Missouri Constitution, this is known as Amendment 5 on this November 5th ballot, first is... Right now, you even if there weren't all 13 licenses um, filled in the state of Missouri, the Constitution only allows casinos to be built on the Missouri and Mississippi. Currently, mm -hmm. the First Amendment would be to also allow to be built on the Osage River downstream from the Bagnell Dam. And the second change would be to increase from 13 license to instead a 14th or allow a 14th license in the state of Missouri. Of course, this is separate from Osage Nation. Yeah. Yeah, right. This is not the Indian uh, Nation Casino. This is the ORGC, Osage River Gaming uh, Convention. Uh, it will also include a hotel and conference center and other retail spaces. And uh, we were actually talking about this on the show last week of where are they going to put this? I didn't realize that they had already decided a place to put it. So they're going to build it near the Osage River in the city of Lake Ozark along Highway 54, in that quarry you talked about there, you know, you drive by it if you're going to Eldon all the time. Uh, I thought it had to be on the water. So that's going to be another change, apparently, to the Constitution that it doesn't have to be on the water if they're going to put it over there. 
Yeah, I don't know exactly how that works or if that's where the hotel and the uh, convention part will be and then the actual boat will be. I mean, you go to Boonville, I don't know how much of that actually floats. Right, exactly. I'm not sure water. any of that is I don't, on the water. I think part of it has to include a boat. So I don't know if there's... Anyway, now this, as you said, separate from Osage Nation, which still, they're working with the federal government mm -hmm. for permission to open their own casino, which would not be subject to state gaming regulations, but they still need the governor's signature mm -hmm. there. Again, that's separate from this. Bally's senior VP of corporate development, Christopher Jewell, says that the casino would bring many benefits, $5 million in economic development initially, the hotel project, hundreds of living wage jobs year round, and hundreds of construction jobs over the next few years. If, given the go-ahead, uh, Bally expects about an 18-month timetable to opening the casino and hotel doors. Of course, this still rests on the shoulders of Missouri voters this November 5th. And Chris, we're like a month away from what is the most important election in the history of our country. And so for the state of Missouri, you're hearing, especially here at the lake, you're hearing a lot about sports gambling. You're hearing a lot, or sports betting. You're hearing a lot about another casino. You're hearing a lot about Amendment 3, remove the Missouri ban on abortion. You're hearing a lot about uh, sheriff, numerous state reps, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, senator, governor, lieutenant governor, and not to mention president and vice president, all on the ticket. And you've got like Proposition A, minimum wage increase in the state of Missouri, mm -hmm. which is currently at $13.75. They're proposing that goes to $15 an hour, an increase of a dollar and a quarter every year until 2026. That's on the... Uh, ballot mid-county fire camden county ambulance both have propositions on the ballot as well and then um there's some constitutional amendment questions about amendments rights to vote citizens and being a legal citizen right to vote so listen i'm telling you guys you're a month away first you need to make sure you know what's on the ballot you can get your sample ballot right now the camden county website does a great job the sample ballot. I've already downloaded it. You can see some of it right there. I've already printed it and have looked over it. Uh, but there's lots of resources online to look at that. And believe me, you won't turn on the TV, a streaming service, social media without seeing an ad. Football Sunday, watching through a YouTube TV, right? I saw probably 10 uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls ads mm -hmm. and probably 10 yes on uh, Amendment 2, you know, the sports betting, the right. online sports betting and why that's going to put millions of dollars in schools. I mean, they are already hitting it hard as far as buying the airways and the digital. So we're just getting started. Buckle up here these next five weeks. It seems like I've seen a whole lot more of the Harris Walls spots than I've seen Trump spots. Way more. So I think they're spending a lot. Maybe they have a lot more money to spend than uh, Trump has. And I'm sure a lot of these networks are already heavily funded by certain sides. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be more apt. And if you are let's say, former President Donald Trump, are you going to want to spend a lot of money with some of these networks that have done nothing but attack you? That work and, against you, yeah. Correct. Do you yeah. really want to then spend money? It's like, you know, do you think that Mayor Michael Harmison is going to want to spend money with Harmony's Cheese Store with me moving forward <laughs> these next couple months until we mend this bridge and, and get back on track here? But, hey, speaking about building back and getting on track, you guys talked about last week when mm -hmm. I was gone about the toll booth and the effect that that's had with yeah. traffic up 40 to 50%. Mm -hmm. And so I keep getting people asking like, well, hey, are they ever going to move those toll booths, right? right and yeah. so it looks like I saw an article from KRMS um, that MoDOT is actually close to removing those toll booths. Yeah, you know, and that's going to be a job because there's a whole lot of concrete there. It's not just, you know, going through that little building thing. They've got those huge blocks of uh, concrete that they're going to have to probably blast out of there. And once they blast those out, they're going to have to go back and redo everything. So apparently they're going to have to shut down. There will be two separate weekly, week-long, five-day closures of Route MM to allow the contractor to demolish uh, the old plaza and reconstruct the pavement. So it's it's going to cause a little bit of trouble when they do it. I immediately panic when, <laughs> I, when I hear that, where, where I live, right? Yeah. Uh, I saw that. But the nice thing is, 
they're not expecting to have that bid start that till after the end of the year and hoping to do that in the winter when there wouldn't be as much traffic. And I don't know what their plans are, are going to be. I'm going to reach out, talk with Danny Rager and, and see. Uh, but really cool. The only thing that I still worry about is with the increased traffic over there mm -hmm. is increased accidents. You know, yeah. we've been nearly ran off the road. Uh, Andrew can uh, attest to that. I mean, there's just more activity. There's a lot of residents uh, on, on that side. And the west side is booming mm -hmm. as far as more people uh, discovering the west side because of that toll booth no longer being there. Yeah. And so that's not going to change. That's only going to continue. I think they're going to have to widen MM and TT. There's just so much more traffic and those roads are narrow, pretty narrow right now. I think they're going to have to widen them a little bit to, um, you know, to, because there's so much more traffic there. Sure. All right. So a couple of weeks ago before uh, I got to take my week hiatus, thanks again. Did you have a good Mike. time? Yeah, I had a great time. And I just thank you so much to Mike Clayton uh, for filling in. Yep. Uh, he, he does great. And I was like, man, every time that I'm not here, I get a lot smarter, <laughs> you know, in, in my absence. <laughs> But we talked the week before with our good friend Stacy Pirtle and Magic Dragon Trails. And, you know, it got me thinking, man, there's so many great trails and things down here at Lake of the Ozarks. Yep. I mean, we have the Lake of the Ozarks State Park, which is the number one state park in America yep. as far as mileage. And uh, the trail improvements coming to the lake aren't just with Magic Dragon Trails. There's another one, um, and it is with, through branches for the lake, with the uh, Lake of the Ozarks State park and this is a huge project and another one that's going to be a big win for lake of the ozarks yeah members of the ncc program expected to uh, de be deployed here at the lake of the ozarks in early november they will begin the project that will include increasing accessibility for hiking biking and equestrian users as well Which as rerouting horses. Uh, horses right yeah as well as rerouting the trail to reduce erosion increase sustainability and improve watershed so work on the trail is scheduled to be done by mid-December. I and, mean, so they're gonna get to it and get it done. And I left out that this is at the Trail of Four Winds, which is a multi-use trail at the Lake of the Ozark State Park. And that's one of the more popular uh, trails out there. So a lot of you familiar with Trail of the Four Winds, that 14.1 mile trail, it's getting a massive overhaul. And this is the AmeriCorps National Civilian Community Corp. And they're the ones that have partnered with Branches for the Lake, a nonprofit here at Lake of the Ozarks. And as you alluded to, they are doing major work and it's like, I guess, volunteers, but I mean, we're not paying for it. And one of the requirements they had to do while they stay here for, I guess, these five weeks, yeah. you have to find somebody locally to house you. And I'm sure that Branches for the Lake and, you know, Community Foundation of the Lake and Stacey Pearl and Jan Amos and Jane, and I'm sure a ton of them were involved, they had to find somewhere to put them up for free. Found a good place too, didn't they? Margaritaville yeah. answered the call and is gonna house them, but this is really great synergy. This is just a small sample size of what our lake community is all about, but Margaritaville puts them up, right? Mm -hmm. And then these, these organizations are partnering and they're going to expand and, and make our trail system better, which is gonna be great and as visitors come in. And it's worth noting, this is like one of the best times of the year. Like we have this warm week yeah. Get out and enjoy the trail system at Ha Tonkin, Lake of the Ozark State Park. It's so warm, I'm still wearing my sunglasses and my Hawaiian shirt, baby. I cannot wait to get done working today to start <laughs> yard work. Like, yeah. it is the perfect day for it. Man, okay. what a... So real quick, though, before mm -hmm. we run out of time, last week, uh, Mike Clayton and I talked about rumors of the rich and famous oh, that live yes. at the lake, right? Yes. Uh, did, did you have any you wanted to throw on there? Have you heard of any? Have you heard any more about Patrick Mahomes or no, any but, of that? No, but listen, I want to know, because I saw that TikToker. Yeah. He said, hey, Patrick Mahomes, and they made it look like he was building that house by there, the toll bridge. It wasn't his, and it's not his. I don't believe Patrick Mahomes would build a house here at Lake of the Ozarks, and here's why. There'd be no privacy. Once we find out where it's at, yeah. imagine the wave runners and sure. the axopars pulling up and just waiting to crawl up on his riprap and mm -hmm. get up and take photos of him and Brittany and their kids. Like, it's not going to happen. He needs privacy. Best that's going to happen is he might golf down here with Travis Kelsey at Portachima. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't count on that either. And if they do move down here, Will's probably not going to know about it, so you guys can quit asking me. Uh, but it did make me think after seeing you guys do your segment of, 
I don't know where any of these celebrities are, but I wanted to know from you guys. Right. Like, what celebrities have you met at Lake of the Ozarks, or do you know of where a celebrity's house is? I, I don't want to necessarily give it away, but if you've had a cool encounter with a celebrity, or you've heard a rumor of a celebrity that's building a house at Lake of the Ozarks, other than Patrick Mahomes, unless you know. And drop yeah. it down in the comments because we would love to know. And as we wrap up this week, my friends, check out Don and Merlin Vandervoort on this week's Community Spotlight Show. Second time they've been on in really cool stuff. Until next week, from Slumberland at the Lake, I'm Wild Will, and this is Uncle Chris.